Chris Miller, welcome to this one-to-one. -one. I don't think it would take a rocket scientist to work out what's the most special day you've had in the blue strip. <laughs> Obviously, the, the cup final springs to mind, uh, and that, that was just unbelievable when the Scottish Cup at Celtic Park with, with guys who have now become like, you know great friends. Uh, having all your family there, all your friends there, it was just a special occasion. Obviously, being the, the first team in the club's history to lift a, a major trophy was, was makes it all even more special. Yeah, you know you're going to dinners for the next 40 years, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's something we'll have to put up with. Um, what were the lows? The lows, you know, it's been hard. That lows have been more personal, you know, obviously, some like one of the seasons, a couple of seasons, I had, had injuries, I was played a wee bit of hamstring injury. Uh, that, that was frustrating because Obviously, you wanted to play, and there was times where we were coming back, working really hard rehab, and then for whatever reason, it was it was going again, and you know that's something that I've managed to work hard and put behind me. But uh, that that was probably low, and, and also <laughs> I was getting told that you're that you're not going to get a, a contract again because you know I still feel great, I really do. You know, 35. Obviously, some people might think that's a bit over the hill, but I'm feeling really good. I've always looked after myself. I've known major injuries why, so you know I'm hoping to, to to find a new club and, and play another season. Reading into that, were you stunned when he when he took you in and uh, offered you those fatal words? I wasn't stunned because the way the year had went, you know, he, you know, as yourself as a player, I wasn't playing as much as what I wanted to. I was coming in and out. I'd been told in the summer that I could find a new club, and I managed to change his mind, uh, which doesn't happen very often. I'll, be, I'll tell you, <laughs> uh, but you know, it's it was coming, and when he told me, obviously, uh, I was like, right, fair enough. It's not nice to hear, and I'd, I'm sure he didn't, Gaffer didn't enjoy doing it either, obviously, because. You know, we've, we've worked for a, since he's came to the club and we had successful times. So, you know, he says that it wasn't easy for him to do. It's never a nice thing for a manager to do. And it's just one of these things in football. You've got to try and be professional. And we both move on and we, sh we shoot cans and wish each other the best. And, you know, obviously, we've got history again. I, I want to see the club do well. I want to see the gaffer go on and do well as well. When you look back, um, is he the most influential of managers you've had? I think he's definitely up there. You know, he, when there was a time when I was maybe going to leave St Johnston, uh, I had I'd knocked back a contract and I always remember the like, gaffer sitting me down and, and stalling and having a good talk with us about sometimes I'm grass isn't greener, but it's better to stay here, places you know. And you know, and it turned out I ended up re signing, you know, and that was a big part of it because the way he kind of spoke to me and, and put it across. Uh, so he's definitely got a massive influence. Derek McInnes as well, taking me to St Johnston, uh, took a chance on me, you know, and when I was at Morton, and it proved to be a decent signing, I think. It's not bad for a local lad playing for your local club as well. Mm -hmm. You know, if I had five great years at, at Morton, it, it was really good. Uh, the match went third, the second division. So it's my career so far has been times with, with success. You know, it's, it's been winning things and and, and getting uh, trophies, accolades, you know, that kind of thing. So it, it's, it's been a good, a good career. But I'm not done yet. I, I still want to play, and I want to play as high a level as possible. And I still feel I've got experience to, to offer a team out there. I know you want to play. Do you think you're good enough to play in the Premiership next season? I think I've shown this year in, in uh, my performances. You know, I had two and a half months out not, not playing when I thought it was going. I got brought in at Ibrox and, you know, I probably played one of the best games I've, I've actually played uh, after knocking the ball for two and a half months. So I know any time I've been called upon, you know, I, I've come in and done a, a good job for the team at St Johnston. And, you know, for me, that means that I've still got something to offer at, at, at the Premiership level. When you look back, um, you're talking about levels. European football, however short it lasted at times, you still get the chance to say you played in it. Mm -hmm. No, it was, it was a great experience, and that's something that I'll always be grateful for. For signing for St Johnston, it gave me a chance to play on a European level. It doesn't matter whether it be first round, second round, whatever it is. You know, we played some big teams. The Rosenberg game also springs to mind. Over there, went over and, and won one now in the two seasons and four. They'd, they'd been playing the uh, Champions League quarterfinals, so. That was no main feat. Uh, you know, it's been great to experience those. You know, playing against different teams, different cultures, and it's something that, as a player, any player, you, you want to try and do. Is there a, a particular? You haven't scored that many. You've created <laughs> a few, but is there a, is there a particular goal that sticks in your mind? Uh, a couple of goals. My first goal uh, for the club at at Queen of the South. It was a three each game, and just to get that that first goal was just a massive relief. You know, I'd been brought in as a kind of goal scorer in midfielder because I'd, I'd scored a few at Morton at the time. But just the way it worked, out, I, I played further uh, on the right, and I was playing more centre for Morton. But you know, as, as the years went on, I kind of <laughs> progressed, or we'll say regressed, we'll say progressed, right? <laughs> and I kind of hold in midfielder, uh, 
and uh, it was great. You know, I managed to play a lot of games, but the, the, I think the, the winner against Dundee United, the two-one game, uh, it was one each up to eighty-five minutes and went on to be amazing. Managed to beat John Rankin a couple of things, and then stick it in the corner to win two-one. And the, the celebrations that you know it was amazing. Like, the boys just absolutely jumped on top of me. I was at the bottom, it, squealing, I can't breathe, and <laughs> it was just great to see them kind of celebrate that with me as well. Will all your family be there on Saturday? You know, my, my wife's just opened up her own salon, so that's one of the things she was saying. She was, uh, oh, the way it's went, she said, I've not played as much. She was like, oh, women can be a bit touchy, so I'm not going to any games. And then when I found out I was going to move on, she was like, oh, I'm absolutely good at that. I can't make the game, but, you know, my two young girls will be there, Ellie and Sophia, and my mum and dad will be up, and all my brothers. So but it'll be nice to, to share that occasion with them, and, and uh, I look forward to it again, saying, thanking all the fans and, and everybody at the club that's, that's made my time so memorable. Well, give me an insight into you as a person. Are you the type of person that'll be a, a, a cold, stoic wave, or are you going to be an emotional bubble? <laughs> are you going to be an emotional bubbling wreck? I think anybody that knows me will say it's the, the latter there. And uh, even when some of the messages were coming through, like obviously I put a wee thing on my Facebook and, and Twitter just thanking everybody that when it was announced. And you know, some of the messages that came through, I was like, I did have tears in my eyes when I read them because you, a club or as a player, you want to make a mark on the game or a mark at a club. And, you know, and, and the messages I've been getting through it, it seems that I've managed to do that. So, you know, when you, when I think my player that always gives my, my all and wears my heart on my sleeve, and, and I, I just can't help that way. So I know for a fact that there'll be tears and starts at the end of the game, <laughs> but, you know, it'll be good to get even my, my two girls on the pitch and, and really savour the occasion. You've got that sense of family about it. What would your message be to the, to the St Johnston fans who obviously you won't be playing in front of again in their strip? You know, I'd, I'd just like to take the opportunity to thank them for all their support throughout the years. Uh, they took not only myself but my, my family to their hearts and, and uh, really made us feel welcome at the club. And you know, it's been a magnificent time for me personally, and I think it's been a, a great time for, for the club. So for everything and everything they've done for me, I'd just like to wish them my, my deepest thanks. And uh, I've always had a place for the club in my heart. Ruffy and I have been monitoring your career. We're worried because it's getting ever closer now to the part where you make that shift. <laughs> are you are you ready to be a journalist or are you going to go into coaching? What are you going to do? I don't know. It's you know it's like it's in, in, in life and football. It's opportunities have got to be there and it's got to be the right one. Uh, you know I, I enjoy doing all the media stuff. Uh, I I've started doing my own personal training stuff now. And, so if you're ever looking for a for some training, come and see me. We work heavily on our we work heavily on our touch, you know. I, I we've adopted the Chris Waddle thing. Why run forty yards when you can pass it forty? <laughs> no, but uh, you know, I'd love to do some more media work, uh, and if that's something that, that's going to happen in the future, it's it's all about opportunity. So. If there's anybody that would like to give me an opportunity, then I'm more than happy to take it. Yeah, you've loaded the bases, but do you think going back to the the start of it all, your grounding at Celtic in the early days, do you think that maybe that foundation was there that gave you the, the desire, or was it family that gave you the desire to keep going even when things go against you and you don't get the breakthrough you're looking for? No, I think it's, you know, if one door shuts or you're, you're not quite getting what you want, uh, whatever it is, I think it's just, it's came from my family, it's a, it's a work ethic, you know, and it's just something, like, I, I would never say that I was the best player uh, coming through, uh, and uh, there's been better players than me that haven't had as successful a career as, as what I've had, so, but something I've always had is a, a self-belief and a confidence and, and, a, and a work ethic, and, and that comes from family, uh, and, and I think it's always instilled in me by my mum and dad, and it's something that I've I've, that I've always strived to, no matter what in my, in my life, whether it be going and doing my degree, you know, I always want to do the best I can, whether it be now doing be bits of personal training, I want to always try and better myself. And I think that's something, no matter what you want to do, uh, whether it be journalist, coaching, football, fireman, policing, whatever it is, uh, it's something that, that, that's, that's stuck me in good stead, so it's just a hard work ethic. Just to finish, I'm going to take you back. It's 2014, it's Cup final day. What are your memories of that 90 minutes? Oh, it's, it goes in a blur, it does. You, you, you just want to... Uh, I remember the first 10 minutes, I was thinking to myself, get a touch of the ball, because it was like, it was quite frantic. Uh, and then I managed to get a, a bit of touch on the ball, get the ball down, play and start to kind of calm us down a wee bit. Uh, and then the, my first real memory is we had a couple of chances just before the goal. I put a couple of nice through balls down the left-hand side, put David Wellspin in the and then it got cut back to James Dunn, the keeper saved it. And then obviously, the, one of the biggest memories is, is the goals, obviously. The goal ball coming in, Ando, 
getting uh, above Keith Watson at the back post is obviously now at St Johnston. We don't like to remind him of that now and again. <laughs> getting that goal and then uh, Alan Manis, the one that hits the bar and it comes down, hits his back and manages to stay on. When things like that happen, you think this, this could be our time. And then obviously uh, Steve McLean, you know, there was a 50-50. And I know Michael well, and there was only one person that was coming out and talk with that ball, and it was Steve McLean. He goes through, wins it, puts it in, and he's off his tap into the crowd. And I think his family and all were just at that corner as well, so he managed to get on and celebrate with them. And obviously, they think the full time whistle goal, and it's just elation. It's just the best feeling I've ever had in, in my whole my career at football. And then you managed to get my wife, they were sitting up at the top, but they managed to get their, uh, down with my girl and get a money park, get my nephew onto the park, and then the whole celebrations after it, the open top bus getting your medal, getting out, all of that kind of stuff is just, and then on a drink for about two or three days, I think it was. <laughs> that, that's when it goes a bit blurry. But uh, no, it was just a fantastic occasion. It's, and it's something that you would have loved to have relived, you know, throughout your career. It was always, a, you always strive for that. But the fact that you got to do it once, you know, is enough.